Welcome to the Space Marketing Podcast, where we look at marketing principles, strategies, and tactics through the lens of space. Hi, I am your host, Izzy House, and I am so excited to share this journey with you as we explore marketing in the space industry. This week, we will chat with Alice Carruth, marketing professional and producer of the T-Minus Space Daily News Podcast. So, lift off in three, two, one. Welcome to the Space Marketing Podcast. Information relating to our discussion today and links to the video version can be found in the episode show notes on spacemarketingpodcast.com. Please like and subscribe to the podcast. It will help more people reach beyond the atmosphere. Information in this episode is for entertainment and information only. Please consult a professional for your specific situation. Not long ago, we spoke with Brandon Karp, Executive Director of N2K Networks. One of the programs is the T-Minus Space Daily Podcast. Today, we chat with T-Minus producer Alice Carruth. Alice and I met via social media not long after I decided to commit to space and we connected on LinkedIn. She has been so helpful and supportive as I was writing my book and was even one of the very first podcast guests on this podcast. She was a marketing maven of one of the most iconic spaceports, and it is iconic because of marketing efforts like hers. So there are a handful of marketing professionals like Alice in the space arena. And let me tell you, there is no mistaking where they are. Their brands shine brightly. I launched an article this week on the importance of having a marketing professional on your team. Alice was the first one I thought of as an example of what a space marketing professional looks like. She currently resides as the producer of the T-Minus Space Daily News Podcast, which reached over 100,000 downloads in only a few short months of launching. So, hi Alice, welcome again to the podcast. Thank you, Izzy. It's always a pleasure to come and speak with you. Oh, and you know, we haven't seen each other in a little bit. Our our uh, our space conference season is getting ready to kick up, and, and and I can't wait for that to begin. Yeah, we've already just realized we've got about four coming up in the next few weeks, so we need to start booking all of our travel, which is always the fun part of the space travel. <laughs> Anything interesting you're going getting ready to go see? Uh, yeah, actually, T-Minus has been asked to be a media partner for a couple of big conferences coming up. Uh, the first one is AIAA's Ascend, so we'll be going to Las Vegas in October for that. Uh, and then we're going to be over with Beyond Earth, um, speaking to Steve Wolf, and that'll be in DC. And then we're talking to the main conference as well. So yeah, we're really excited to get involved and really start helping promote these incredible events around the country. Oh, Yes, and, and I have such a fun time when I go to these as well. So I, I'm I'm trying to get to the one in DC. So let's fingers crossed. So yes, definitely. First, <laughs> l- let me say, wow, T minus is an awesome production. You have been doing an amazing job, and I am an avid listener. And it is vital for me to get some of the latest news. And you really focus on something that's near and dear, which is the spaceport industry. And, uh, you know, you're, you're obviously you, you know a lot about the spaceport industry and the space industry. And, uh, I'm a complete fan of the program. So thank you for that. (laughs) Yeah. It's been a lot of fun before we get into T minus. Um, I want to talk about you and how you got into marketing and let the, we've, we've talked about a little bit of your background in, in the previous episode, but let's, let's, let's talk about it again because it's very interesting. So how did you get into marketing and then how did you get into space marketing? 
oh, uh, I kind of fell into it by accident. I know saying falling into space is kind of a bit of a cliche, but it's really true. Um, so I was a journalist uh, and was working in the Middle East when I met my husband and we uh, welcomed our daughter in the Middle East and I couldn't go back into the newsroom full time after having her. It was very difficult. So he took a position in New Mexico and we moved here 10 years ago. And I honestly thought, what on earth am I going to do in New Mexico? Um, and then met a really amazing person called Jonathan Firth, who was the former vice president of Virgin Galactic. Uh, was interviewing him when I was freelancing as a journalist and he said, hey, look, I've got this really cool uh, event coming up and we could do with somebody with a bit of a media background. Do you think you could help me write some press releases? And so he's launched the Las Cruces Space Festival. And, you know, journalists the world over, we tend to just really dive into any subject and become subject matter experts quite quickly. We learn, do our researches, start really thinking about what the history is. And I was instantly hooked. Uh, this area in New Mexico has an incredible space history spanning from the 1930s when uh, Robert Goddard came down here from Massachusetts and started launching rockets in Roswell, uh, going on to the uh, uh, early V2 rocket launches from White Sands Missile Range. In fact, up until very recently, I think it had the record for the most amount of suborbital launches in the whole country. I think Florida might be breaking that with all their orbital launches at the moment that's been going on in the last couple of years. Um, but it's really had an incredible history that spanned, like I say, all that whole way through. NASA's had a site here since the 1960s, which has been involved in every single launch since the Apollo era. Um, and then they built the spaceport back in the 1990s was when the process started. In 2006 is when it opened. Um, and I thought, what a great opportunity. But yet nobody in the area knew anything about any of that history. So the, the festival focuses on celebrating that history, but also explaining to people why there is a spaceport here. Because this is a really odd place for most people to think, why, why put a spaceport in southern New Mexico? Um, but really it was because, like I say, they've been launching here for such a long period of time. It has this incredible uh, restricted airspace that's controlled by the Department of Defense. So there's a lot of R&D that can go on here that can't go on anywhere else in the country. Country. And so it makes sense. But if you don't know about that history, then it doesn't make sense of why they're here. So really, I kind of came into it by accident, helping out Jonathan with this festival. Uh, and in the second year of doing that, I was offered a job thanks to a good friend of mine, Pat Hines, um, who was investing in a company that needed somebody to come in and do some marketing. So that really was my first uh, opportunity to do marketing. I didn't know marketing. I really had no idea about social media platforms, except for my own little personal one. Uh, so I had to learn very quickly about algorithms. I mean, having studied journalism and knowing how to tell a story, it really isn't a huge step to then go across to marketing. And as I say, you, you tend to become this subject matter expert when you're a journalist to really learn and throw yourself in at the deep end. So I took on this really cool company, tried to help them explain how they did space communications. And after doing that for a year, uh, an opportunity came up at the Spaceport to come and do public relations. And so that's how I stepped into Spaceport America and worked there for three years. Um, and then really the opportunity to come and do N2K and T- minus was just a gift. It married my background in journalism and broadcasting with my passion for space and understanding how to tell a story about space. And, and really space communication is quite a niche area. Um, it's the same with cybersecurity as well. I'm learning that when you do your technical communications, you've got to be able to understand exactly what that person is telling you, be able to digest it and then put it out in a way that will reach a much wider audience. So it's kind of a bit of a, a specialized way of being able to tell stories. And that's what really kind of happened to me. I just found an, an opportunity and actually found that I was pretty good at it. Well, my second book focused on spaceports. So, uh, you know, that's where we, we really started to, to have a lot of talking. And you were very supportive of my journey into that. And I say, one of the, thing, one of the things I say is that spaceports are where space begins. And the, one of the things I'm doing right now is working with Global Spaceport Alliance. And I can see your footprints everywhere I turn in, in back behind. So you've been instrumental in spaceports and, and you even have taken that on T minus. So there's a lot that I see you doing because I know to look for it and you're doing a fabulous job at T minus. And, um, it's, it's not enough to just, like you said, you have to tell the story in a way that is digestible. 
and you're doing it every day. And uh, so if it, it, it's so important to get that story out about space because our lives revolve around space and space is so very important to, to just the daily, the, the, I mean, we carry space in our pocket with a, a phone. So it is in every aspect of our, our daily lives. So, but it's important to understand where that's coming from and that message really needs to get out there and, and you are doing it. When T, T minus kind of is that educational component that I saw you also using with Spaceport America, you know, you, you have a heart for education, you have a passion for education and T minus, you can tell, fulfills that and, um, you did a lot of STEM stuff with your your outreach, and you also had a podcast at the Spaceport America. And let me tell you, I, I enjoyed that podcast very much. I was also a listener of that. But you have really developed a radio voice. Oh, so. thank you. <laughs> it's kind of going back to my roots, I suppose. Yeah, you, but it, it's 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 you've been different. Uh, when Maria was on vacation, I believe she was on vacation because you were taking over for her on the daily stuff. Um, your your way of of talking has definitely changed. So, what what have you learned, and what have you seen as a difference between the spaceport marketing and the T minus marketing? I mean, how how has your life changed between those two? Tell us about what it is you do behind the scenes. Oh, so well, T minus is is run by a company called N two K Networks, and N two K stands for News to Knowledge. So really, I'm drawing in on that STEM outreach that I'd established at the Spaceport and with the Global Spaceport Alliance, and I'm taking it to a completely different platform. Um, I'm really, like I say, my background is in journalism, so I never I've never been a presenter. It's never been my my desire to be in front of a camera or, or on a microphone even. Um, but I've learned from the many years of being around presenters of how to put a story across and how to deliver it in a good way. Um, so it was always that I was going to be the backup person when Maria was out. And yes, she has taken a couple of vacations. And so I've had to step up to the mic and get over my fear of being in front of people too much. Presenting is fine, putting me in a room full of engineers, but all of a sudden put a microphone or a camera in front of me and I freeze and I forget how to speak quite often. So um, <laughs> I've had to come overcome that fear. But really, it's a lot of the same thing. It's taking that information that's been put out there uh, and digesting it in a manner that is easy to take in. Uh, we call it fondly, Maria and I, the... Uh, tapas or meze of news we just want to give you little tidbits little tasters that kind of whet your appetite and if you then decide you want to go and read more the idea is we link to articles that we think are really well written about that subject matter and if you want to know more than going beyond the headlines you can go and click onto our website go through the links of our selected reading and find more information often from the source as well because that is my big thing I want to go straight to the company's press releases I want to go straight to um, media wires and say this is where the information's come from go and find it out for yourself um, and we try to give context as well which I love the show notes by the way thank you I <laughs> that's love really the show Brandon notes. you know the show notes are one of my favorite parts we really purposely did that because again it's that news to knowledge we want to give people that little bit of information but we also want to get them that opportunity to learn more that's what t-minus that's what n2k is all about um, and really that's the only way we're ever going to work together as an industry it's funny we're such a small industry really when you look at it the space industry across the u.s and around the world even i know people that are working in space over in malaysia and taiwan and australia that i would never have thought about learning a meeting from working in media even and so when we learn more about each other's work and we're able to say, oh, OK, so you're doing space based solar work and I'm doing propulsion. How does that even work? But actually figuring out there is always a connection because it's such a small intertwined industry. Sometimes you might want to be learning about something that's completely different on the other end of the spectrum. And also we want to have a, an opportunity where people can come in. Uh, who aren't part of the typical space industry and learn about it in an easy way because space, you know, we keep hammering at home. 
spaces for everyone. We want everybody to get involved. But there are still a lot of people that are sort of saying, I'm not sure where I fit in. You know, my my interest is in insurance or my interest is in law or maybe I am a, a communicator or a, a digital artist. Where do I fit into that picture? So I try to keep the stories every single day short and precise with more information for people to follow up with. And then we follow up every day with an interview that's about 10 minutes. And we really try and cover the whole spectrum of the industry. So I've had everybody from Tim Gagnon, who's a really great um, artist who designs patches for NASA, to Frank um, White, who talks about the overview effect. We've had uh, Josef Ashbacher from ESA come on and talk about what they're working on. I've had former NASA astronauts. I've had uh, commercial spaceflight participants. And then I've got people that are everyday engineers that are working on propulsion and solar energy that are just doing incredible things. And I think the idea is that the audience always comes away with going, huh, I didn't know that before. Now I've learned it. What a great thing to go back and take to my team. And that's what we're all purposed about. You know, we're very, very focused on workforce at N2K and recognize that workforce is so important. It's certainly what I I learned when I was working at the Spaceport. It's certainly what I worked on when I was part of the Global Spaceport Alliance Academic Partnership Outreach Group. We're never going to work in silos. We have to work together to get this inclusion into the industry. And that means bringing in people that might not necessarily think space is for them. And so, yeah, we're really focused on how we can get people information about it. Hold on to your boosters. We will be right back with guest Alice Carruth from N2K and T- after a brief message from our sponsors. Please like and subscribe to the Space Marketing Podcast wherever you listen. And that's the whole point of what you're doing is that most people, there's a disconnect between what is our daily lives and space. You know, it's always, you know, that's for somebody else. And, but the truth is we use space in every aspect and there are things that we need to know about space in order to make sure that, you know, the our our daily lives stay intact and that and then we can get excited about it which is something that's near and dear to me is is actually you know sharing that message so that you know there's there's a an, a 17 year old out there that he didn't know that that his love of cooking could be transferred to something in space and that could actually end up feeding the earth because the technology goes up and it comes back down so uh, it, it it benefits this earth and everything that we do up there so that's one of the things i also love about what it is you do is you you don't silo it into what is just you know europe or America or you know you you go across the whole planet you you talk about what China's doing what Russia's doing and what other entities are doing and you're educating everyone about their connection to space and that is beautiful so how that's really key to us I was going to say that that international part of it is exactly key to us um in case my accent doesn't give me away i'm not from america um and you know i like to be able to say to people i actually learned more about the uk space industry working in the u.s space industry than i ever did in the uk um i'm sorry and i always apologize to the team over there i'm like you're doing a really good job but we're we're years behind what's been going on over in the u.s and uh, one oh, thing about politics they're, you, yeah, they're, they're getting they're there really, they are getting they, there they, they've got they some incredible can... people over there uh, they do, and they really are working very hard at it. But, you know, one thing that uh, po- 
space does is it goes across political divides and that should be international as well and we've seen it time and time again on the ISS we see how the US and Russia are still able to work on the International Space Station together and it should be the same with everything and I honestly when people kind of go oh there's a space race going on I want to almost pivot them and say actually it's more of a an opportunity and a learning chance if you see all these countries and their cooperation that's going on the US is working with India China's working with India there's the BRICS nations coming together uh, the allies are all coming together with ESA and um, NASA. I just think it's incredible. What a great opportunity. Uh, And unfortunately, a lot of people still think that space is just a US thing. um, And it's just still an agency thing. And if we can get beyond that and show them actually, there's a lot of incredible things going on. I think it will make a huge difference to the industry as a whole. I like the idea of a race because it gives people something to do. (laughs) Um, You know, uh, if you're just running, you're not going to reach as far as if you have your friend there that's running with you that can run ahead of you and make you look bad. So, you know, a a friendly competition is is really healthy for the space race. uh, unfriendly one is is not so much but friendly one is definitely and there are some countries that are really i mean the uk is really working very hard at developing a space program uh europe they're looking at having spaceports there and um developing that so that they don't have to to necessarily launch from just one area that they can actually have something on the soil so there there's there's so much activity it's it's awesome it's awesome so tell us a little bit about the marketing aspect of what it is that you do you've hit some really major milestones lately i mean how long have you been working with the as in this position it hasn't been like what six months no we launched in april (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, um, I, and I guess it's it's part of marketing, but it isn't a sole part. As you know, marketing is multifaceted, and I think a lot it, of people totally think of marketing is. as is just one thing. It's just social media. It's just putting adverts out, commercials. It's just going to conferences. And it's so much more than that. Um, and I, I kind of, part of me... F- pulls my back up when we talk about marketing in podcasts because it kind of makes people go oh I don't want to spend money on this this is kind of crazy but it's a people and it's it's gone back through time if you look at radio advertising and how that's always been a far more prominent uh, methodology for local advertising was the same when it comes to specialized podcasts you can reach a very specialized audience and be very direct and rather than it just being a 30 second ad or a quick photograph you've got the opportunity to get on the microphone and talk for 10 minutes sometimes even longer about your very specialized area and really you've got a captive audience there rather than it just being a one quick shot as you know i think marketing you have to see an advert 15 times before it even resonates in your brain podcasting radio tends to have that's true (laughs) that tends to just work far better it's very very true so um we are part of marketing and i think what we offer to a lot of companies particularly space up space startups is an opportunity to give context to what it is they're trying to do and so I'm very particular about who I invite to come onto the podcast we don't charge for interviews but equally I'm not going to let you come on and just do a 10 minute pitch on your one product so that you're doing a sales I'm doing it to tell that story of what it is you're doing so if I got an earth observation company coming in and talking about their product Why is your product sticking out in the market? What is it you're doing that other people aren't doing it? Why is Earth's observation important? Those are the questions that most people listening want asked. So really, Maria and I just have some fun asking the questions that we think. Uh, Neither of us pretend to be absolute experts in our field. We both have a ton of experience. Uh, Maria's background is in cybersecurity communications. Mine is in in space. and global politics so we kind of blend it between the the two of us but we know we're kind of on that surface level of how much we know so we want to be able to ask the questions that really a lot of people think of but don't always say out loud Uh, particularly when it comes to astronomy they're the ones that I think are really funny when I used to do a lot of STEM outreach uh, kids ask the best questions they just I have no filter and will ask away and the amount of adults that come up to me afterwards and be like I was thinking that but I didn't want to say it out loud but I'm so glad my kids said x y or z so um, we're trying to be a bit childish 
in our approach in a good way and sort of ask those questions that we think everybody else is thinking uh, and get to the bottom of them because that's really where storytelling comes rather than assuming everybody knows everything it's kind of peeling it back to the basics and saying why is why does this matter and I think you hit the nail on the head when you were talking about space being important to everybody and part of everybody's lives I think we forget that as adults quite a lot and sometimes we need a daily reminder from a podcast or any other platform to tell us why that's important. And even if you love space and you you try to, to stay up on it, there are times when I'm listening to, the, you, you know, the, the, the podcast, I'm sitting there going, wow, I didn't know that. I had no idea. And then, of course, you know, then I'm like, oh, I have got to, to dig into that. And that's part of, you know, marketing, too, is that, you know, we get to learn all the time. And... Um, that's what I love about doing this podcast is I get to learn so many different things that I had no idea and we don't have to be the experts we just have to be curious and uh, that's 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 one of the things I love about it so um, and, and tell us about the milestones I think you just hit uh, 100 episodes is, is that oh correct? we're up to yeah we've just gone surpassed 115 today uh, we've okay, awesome. over 150,000 downloads. Um, we're Ooh. reaching, yeah, we're at a really good point considering we've not even been on the air for six months. And, you know, when I first said to people, this is what I was leaving the spaceport to do, I got a kind of a few crazy looks of there's no there's not enough news in space for there to be a daily space news podcast or you'll run out of people to speak to and I just think well we're at 115 and I'm not even close to running out to people I've got a list as long as my arm uh, that with people that I think oh, I'd really love to hear from them I you know everybody from the really well-known Bill Nye the science guy all the way down to people that are doing really different thing green propulsion I was reading today about water propulsion that's being developed by ESA and I just thought Do you know what that's something I would like to learn a little bit more about what does that really involve could that then be applied on the moon if we can figure out if there's enough water up there in the southern pole they're the questions that I think about when I read stories and so I get on those people that are the experts on that information and try and get them to tell us a bit more about it and you, you know you just really complimented us that you come away saying I learned something that's all I ever want you know, every day is a school day and very much approach life that way. And I think if we can get somebody to come away every day and go, huh, didn't know about that. What a great thing. That's what we're trying to do. You know, that's the whole platform, news to knowledge. And hopefully people do come away kind of learning a little bit more or thinking, oh, maybe I could contribute. Maybe there's something I could talk about. Well, reach out to us. You know, we, we want everybody to get involved and we want everyone to have a platform to be able to talk about what it is they're doing. And when it comes to marketing, education is actually the most powerful of all of them. And it's my favorite because you leave people better than you found them. And um, you're not trying to just, you're not trying to sell them something. You know, a lot of people confuse sales with marketing and, and marketing has lots of different names. It's public affairs, it's, it's outreach, it's promotion and it's it's about education it is about making the people connecting them you know with your story and um, making them better than what they were before they started listening and um, so it's it's my favorite it's totally my favorite so a um, hundred when I talked to Brandon you had just crossed over a hundred or were approaching you. I think you just, so that is like lightning speed. I cannot imagine that many downloads way to go. Very, Thank very you. good. So, um, and even though you say it's, you, you have success, it, uh, one of the things about marketing is that one day you can have success with a tactic like education or, you know, social media. And the very next day, in the same situation, it will flop. So marketing is one of those things that, you know, it's, it's like a moving landscape. So what have been some of the frustrations that you have had about our craft? And what are some of the challenges that um, you are still experiencing or have experienced? Oh, Izzy, you, know, you and I have spoken about this many times, but it's how undervalued marketing is. And I get asked all the time, can I do this for free? 
Can I help them for free? Um, and I, I can tell you, having worked with many engineers, they're, uh, they will tell me quite frankly to my face that they are more valuable with their hard skills uh, than our soft skills are. And it's disheartening and it's very difficult to sort of say to someone and say, hang on a second, I'm, I'm worth it. You could have the best idea in the world, but if you don't know how to communicate that to an audience, you're not going to get anywhere. And sometimes you're really lucky. You could be SpaceX and be the coolest kid on the block without having a massive marketing machine pushing it for you. And sometimes you really need to have somebody who understands what it is you're trying to talk about and how to put it out there to a larger audience or even how to focus it on your very targeted audience. Um, it's a skill that I don't think people appreciate as much. I've heard it time and time again. Oh, we've got an intern working on our marketing team. And I think, well, that's great. You're giving them a really good opportunity. But really, the best thing I can tell any space company, and they do ask a lot, is get somebody in house that understands and is caring about it. Because if you don't have somebody who believes what they're telling in that story and doesn't stand behind it, your audience isn't going to believe it. Trust mm -hmm. me, I've seen it many a times when I've had marketing come through or I've had someone pitch to me a story and I think, you don't know what you're talking about. So if you don't talk, know what you're talking about, then how am I going to believe it as the person that's going to go and reach out further for you? So I think it's a really undervalued skill and I think it's something that the space industry is still very slow to catch up on. Uh, they all think that they've got the coolest thing on the block and often they do, um, but they really do need to think about an in-house person. And there are some really incredible, I don't want to take away from the really incredible marketing and PR firms around the world that are also specialised in this. There are some really great people that I've worked with. Uh, you were talking about the UK earlier. Uh, uh, Jess Ratty over there is doing an incredible job talking about what's going on in the UK space industry. She's been working with Spaceport Cornwall. She's also been working with a really cool space a forge out of Wales and really I don't think I'd know much about them if it wasn't for her skills that she's working on over there. Uh, the Merediths over at Riot Mind in uh, New Mexico are doing an incredible job with PR work specialising in uh, space as well. There are some incredible companies that know what they're doing. I just think if you have the opportunity to have somebody in-house it's worth it. And a one person's team is also a very small team. So having a support network of another PR firm that knows what they're talking about or a marketing firm is also really important. So just as it takes multiple people to build a rocket, it takes multiple people to work on telling that story as well. And sometimes your company is your biggest marketing tool. I amount of times I say the CEO of a company is one of your biggest marketing tools. And if you underutilize it, then you're missing out on an opportunity. Um, if you haven't got a really good person who's able to talk, then you need to get a good deputy who's able to jump up and represent the company for you. So, yeah, marketing really is such an important area. And I feel like the space industry is still just trying to catch up on that as an idea. But hopefully, hopefully we're getting there. Um, it certainly takes a little bit more storytelling for us to get the message across. Well, and that is why I wrote my book, my, the first book, is because when I first started doing my career, it was in uh, Southern California, and I was a part of an environmental incubator. So I was surrounded by geniuses that they knew how to, am I, is my dog popping up on here? <laughs> a little, you're okay. A little. So anyway, they knew all this stuff about how to make the planet a better place. They knew how to clean water. They knew how to clean air. They knew how to clean electricity. And it was, it was the equivalent of discovering cancer, a cure for cancer in what they were doing. But if nobody knows you exist, then it doesn't matter. So it, it, in many of those, those geniuses didn't value marketing and never made it out of that incubator and their technology is sitting somewhere in a file cabinet somewhere gathering dust and is not helping anybody. So when I, I came into the space and I decided to start working with space, I saw the same situation. I saw all these incredible uh, inventions and thoughts and, and things and they, you know, they were so used to just getting that NASA grant or, you know, maybe an investor or two, and then that's it. And they didn't have to worry about marketing. And now the landscape is completely different. You know, you, like I was saying, we have 70 to 80 countries now that are investing into space. 
that they're investing in their businesses. And now you don't have one company doing a lander. You've got a dozen companies doing moon landers. So the, the competition is warranting a, a little bit of, you know, you, they're needing marketing or else you, nobody's going to know you're there. So, and uh, that's where like um, having a marketing on staff, you know, to work with those agencies, you can't have your, you know, somebody that's fresh out, that's in school, that has no idea how agencies are run. They have no idea of what's good marketing or what's bad marketing. And they don't know how to work with those outside teams, you know, for the things that they need. And uh, so, um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about marketing professionals and that who may be listening and what advice do you have for those marketing professionals that maybe are, are thinking that space might be for them? You know, what advice do you have for them? There's space for you. My goodness, we need marketing professionals. And, you know, there's a small community, as you know, that we all tend to work together. I like to think that we're pretty good at, at fixing each other's crowns rather than trying to pull each other down, which is really quite wonderful. But we are such a small industry that you need to make sure you look out for each other and, and work together. So if anybody's interested in it, they should be reaching out to people that are already doing the job. So they should be reaching out to the likes of you and others and saying, how do I start? You know, where's the space for me? And learning, you know, it really comes down to being a subject matter expert as much as possible, doing your research and knowing what it is you're talking about. Um, I've come across many business development person who uh, does not understand what it is they're really selling um, and it's disappointing. So it goes across not just marketing, but also the business development team as well, which is part of marketing, really. Um, it's one but of the facets. Knowing, yeah. knowing yeah, knowing exactly what it is you're doing um, and, and putting it out the best possible way uh, and thinking about changing it up regularly. We know this industry is changing. It used to be super, super simple. You'd go to one news outlet and you'd pitch your story and that news outlet would do majority of the work for you. People don't consume news like that anymore. People don't consume information like that anymore. You know, it's not just the internet. It's it's people on podcasts. It's then getting newsletters into their email inbox. It's it's reading a magazine that might come out monthly. It might be a daily news net network. You just don't know. There isn't a one shop fixes everything. So you have to also learn what your audience is, where they're getting their information from, and really trying to target what it is you're messaging to that audience in that manner. So some days I might be really trying to push something on LinkedIn because LinkedIn might be my target audience and other days I might be really pushing something on a completely different platform or wanting it to go out on a completely different medium. So it's a lot of learning and adapting and being humble about it as well. There are days when I walk in and think, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I get a lot of imposter syndrome, Izzy, I'll be honest with you. And I think, oh God, what am I trying to do? But then I remember, actually, I have a skill set that there are other people in the room that don't have. And so I might not necessarily know exactly how they do their job, but I might be able to understand how to tell other people about how they do their job. Um, and that is a valued skill that is important in this industry. So don't ever underestimate how important marketing or your ability to sell is in space uh, and that's essentially what it is you are trying to do in the nicest possible way sales and storytelling come hand in hand when it comes to marketing so learning both of them but also learning not to make people feel like they're being sold something too too aggressively and and that's something I, I would like to touch on is that when you do pick the person to be on your team that they need to to feel that passion for what you do you know because oh, yeah. when you're that creative person you're taking everything that's around you and you know you're filling it full of heart that's when the the message really resonates is when you can tell that the 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 source of that message loves that that thing that widget that that idea and um it, it comes through even if it's just a social media post it comes through and uh if you do have a, a marketing person on staff and um, they're not happy, it, that comes through too. So, and they, and, and they may not even, it's, it's not something that you can pinpoint, but it, it's a, a feeling that comes through. So 
you know, make sure that you pick people that are passionate about what you do. So, and, and on that vein, is there anything that you would like to tell the entrepreneurs or the business executives that have companies, whether they're space or non-space, because non-space is coming into this, in this arena as well, um, what advice would you give them, you know, as they're coming on board into the, the uh, uh, as they're coming on board into space and what advice would you give them about hiring a marketing professional? So the, uh, the old saying is there's space for everyone in space. And I firmly believe that. Um, I definitely think that there is so many incredible opportunities and crossovers uh, between space and medicine and there's between space and manufacturing and so many more that, you know, supply chain is so important to this industry. And I think there it's being underutilized right now. And there is a desperate need for skills to come in that people don't even think about. Certainly when I was at the spaceport, it was skills like welding that people had really not really thought about. But you need a really good skilled welder to come in and work on a lot of things when it comes to space. So don't feel like you have to be a rocket scientist or an engineer to work in the space industry. There's definitely opportunities for you in various different areas. And really, we need people with a varied background. Um, so you might not have any necessary fit this, the bill skills. I amount of times I've looked at job postings and they say you must have 10 years in the space industry before you apply for this job. And I laugh at myself and think there wasn't a commercial space industry 10 years ago. So really, you're just talking to those people that worked for the government, for NASA, for the DOD, which is a very limited number. So let's not be unrealistic when it comes to applying for jobs. If they say that, put it on there. Hey, look, I might not necessarily have the experience in space, but I understand enough about it to know that my skill set is transferable across to what it is I'm going to do. So there's definitely opportunity out there. Don't feel like you're going to be put off. Um, people aren't going to just completely roll over the idea of you not having any experience in space to come and work in space. And when it comes to marketing, don't undervalue it. It's actually probably your most important tool when it comes to your business. Um, it's so important to have brand recognition. You just have to be able to put on any channel in any country in the world and instantly you'll recognize a brand from not only that channel, but from a commercial that comes on. You know those brands. That didn't just happen by accident. That happened by people that really knew their stuff and worked hard at it. And we've seen bad marketing as well. We all know those companies and we know people that have boycotted branding because of bad marketing as well. So you've got to know your audience. You've got to know what message is important to you. And you've got to know how to put it across in a manner that is comfortable to those that are receiving that information as well. So don't undervalue it. Work hard at it. Find the right people. There is plenty of people out there I know that are really good at this area. And I think they're being underutilized right now and underappreciated. So if you have a boxing person on your team, go and say thank you to them. Because trust me, they are doing the hard work and people don't realize just how much work goes into it. Yeah, it's it's an art and a science. So there's there's and it changes every day. It changes. I mean, let's let's look at just one of the social media platforms, you know, Twitter, or X, whichever way you want to look at it, is a very near. You know, that's that's a, a a space entity as well. And look at how much that has changed, just since Elon has actually purchased it, and you know those those type of things. And that takes adjusting. So you have to have somebody flexible on your team that can deal with those. And um, so, okay, one of the questions that I always ask is about where we see the space industry going in the next 10 to 20 years. And you have a very good crystal ball that you study every day on, on what this looks like. So tell us where you think the space industry is going to be going in the next 10, which isn't that long, to 20 years? Oh, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert in this, Anna. Uh, honestly, Izzy, it's changed so much. Even in the five, six years that I've been involved in the space industry, it's evolved and it's changing like the day. Um, I think the areas that I think are going to be most interesting in the next 10 years are going to be the hypersonic point-to-point -point travel um, it's been a massive push by the FAA, by the Global Spaceport Alliance and by a lot of really great private companies that are working on this. I'm not saying that we're going to get point to point travel in 10 years, but I think the development, the research and development side of things are going to really come along in the next 10 years and we're going to figure out a lot of things. I think um, infrastructure is going to be huge. It's undervalued. 
uh, saying this is somebody who used to work at a spaceport as uh, but also ground terminals as well we need that infrastructure it's the boring unsexy part of space but it's vital to everything we do from launch to um, data work and it's going to be huge i think space-based data is massive earth observation in the last year or two even has come such a long way it's gone from being an expensive slow system to be able to access an area to you being able to buy an app and being able to find a photograph from space of pretty much every inch of the earth now that is incredible and now that's opened up whole new areas for space agriculture which i think is a really important area that's going to be developed particularly over in africa right now there's a lot of companies that are really working to figure out how they can learn from earth observation from weather studies when the best time is to sow their seeds, when's the best time to go and harvest the crop, but also where's the best area to go and plant those things as well because there are a lot of things you can see from space on the earth uh, that you can't see from the earth looking across it. So that's going to be a really interesting area as well. So yeah, definitely earth observation, infrastructure and that hypersonic point to point are the three areas I would say are going to be very interesting to watch in the next 10 years. Oh, and in space manufacturing. I'm going to add that one in there just because I find that fascinating. <laughs> and yeah, I, I mean, well, let's let's go a little bit to point to point real quick and tell everybody why that's important, because, you know, th they may not know what point to point is. Why it's important. Well, let's put it this way. If anybody's ever gone on a long haul flight for 14 hours, the idea of being able to take off from a spaceport in Las Cruces, New Mexico, where I am right now and land the other side of the world in two hours is very appealing. Um, it's not just for human transportation, but can you imagine it if you're able to transport cargo that quickly? How many times have we waited for delivery of items that can be quite vital? Point to point could possibly be a huge thing for that. It's also huge for when it comes to defense. Um, you know, the idea of being able to send not just weapons, but also disaster relief um, around the world very quickly. Let's take what's going on in, in Africa, North Africa, in the last week or so between Morocco and Libya. They need supplies and they need them now. Imagine being able to take off wherever those supplies are being produced and land two hours later. What a huge difference that will make. So it's a, an interesting area. It's something we've been talking about for years. I mean, I grew up in London when I remember seeing Concord landing over there and it wasn't particularly well received. But a lot of spaceports around the globe tend to be away from populated areas, uh, but still close enough to be connectable to, to when you need to get to. Um, New Mexico is a perfect example of that. We're about an hour and a half away from the nearest passenger plane uh, airport, but an hour and a half is nothing when you think about it. Um, but how great would it be if we could take off, like I say, from London and arrive in China two hours later via space? So suborbital launching just will take a huge difference. And I actually, I think it should make a huge difference to uh, fuel as well. There are a lot of incredible companies that are coming up prop with propulsion ideas where people think, oh, God, that's going to use a lot of fuel and it's going to cause a lot of problems with the Earth. But they're really thinking outside the box and actually the shorter duration of that flight would actually save a lot of fuel as well. So there is it's definitely going to be an interesting time. It's a lot of um, red tape to get over at the moment. The idea of doing hypersonic flights over land doesn't appeal to many people. But I know the FAA is working very hard to figure out where it can be tested, how things can be done safely. Um, and and I quietly. Think there's going to be some, and quietly. Um, <laughs> and so quietly. we're not hurting people because I mean, that's. That's the primary point of the FAA is is safety first, and I thoroughly respect them for it. Um, but we do need to get there somehow, so we need to figure out exactly how we're going to do it. And I think the next 10 years are going to be pivotal on that, and not just in the US. I can see it happening worldwide. There are a lot of companies coming up with some incredible ideas, and that's really what's going to be a driver on how we're going to travel in the next 10 to 20 years. Well, we just had one flight go, I think it, I think it was in Texas, where they had hydrogen and the only the only off gas or whatever you want to call it, the only uh, uh, thing that it, it gave off was water. That was the byproduct of the flight, and it was a very successful flight. You know, it, it there's there's electric, there's hydrogen, there's all kinds of. I mean, Via Space launched a rocket using plastic water bottles. So, you know, 
the technology is changing drastically in that realm. So I, that's going to be exciting to watch. And you said manufacturing. So what in the manufacturing has it got, got you excited? Uh, in space, manufacturing is definitely an interesting area. Uh, things that we can do in space, everything from uh, pharmaceutical to um, semiconductor work in, in a microgravity environment, it's exciting to see what we can do. It changes the matter of things. It, can, it opens up opportunities that we can't do here on Earth. And I think we are seeing a lot of commercial space companies really thinking outside the box and pushing that area that I think is going to be really exciting. Um, and uh, things like uh, maneuvering in space, objects that might not necessarily be in use anymore. There's a lot of uh, satellites up there that are no longer in commission uh, that can cause a lot of problems with debris. And there are companies thinking outside their box about how they can become space tugs and maneuver them back into Earth orbit or decommission them, uh, landing them in spaces that are well away from populated areas. So I think that's going to be a really interesting area. It's certainly something that's in everybody's mind. Everyone's thinking about space, space, uh, space domain awareness and space traffic management. And I think those areas are going to be something that we're really going to be focusing on as an industry and we all seem to be working together to really find solutions for and I think that's going to be a huge changer and driver in the industry in the next 10 to 20 years it's certainly what I'm interested on at T-minus the last question for the day what do you want to leave our audience with today what do you what thoughts do you want them to mull around and they go you know as they go about their day and say oh okay yeah I've got to think differently about this uh, space is vital to all of us. Um, I recently had a conversation with someone and they were like, oh, I've had such opposition recently. And I said, really, what from? She's like, two opposing groups. One of them is a group of farmers and others a group of environmentalists and they really hate what we're trying to do. And I said to them, well, both of them use space for their information. Sorry. Absolutely. Well, yeah, there is so much we use space for from GPS to, like I say, when you're figuring out your water um, areas that you need to be able to figure uh, focus on in your farming from space or when you need to be sowing your seed or when you need to be harvesting your crops so that's your farming industry you look at the environmentalists how do they know so much is going on with the earth well a lot of that's from earth observation which comes from satellites um, so yes. you know there are two areas that seem so opposing but actually really all focus on space and it happens to all of us in every single part of our lives so it's it's vital it's important it's important to everybody and everybody has a place within it this isn't an industry that's like oh it's over there and it's nothing to do with me it's going to be far more at the forefront of people's lives in the next few decades and I think people need to just stop being resistant to that and realizing it's important to us it's important to support and it's also important to understand a bit more and there are so many different platforms to be able to find that information out on um, obviously we're one of them so if you want to come to n2k space look us up we'll definitely be able to help you with that information but there are so many others as well read about it learn about it and figure out how you can support it in the right manner and see how you can be part of it so good luck to everyone and and i want to i want to touch on that real quick you you said that you know they their their biggest opposition for them and and that's a, a big part of understanding your audience and coming out with the right message because you know, the thing is, is when it comes to environmental, it's all about what we see looking back down on Earth. You know, we didn't know about the hole in the ozone layer, you know, before the satellites actually showed us that. And we were able to change legislation. And now those holes are healing that were in the ozone on the poles. And um, so it's, it's understanding your market and seeing them as people and you know, giving them the information they need so that they can be educated about what it is that you're trying to do. So yeah. that's the key. Education is so important. So, um, all right. Well, thank you so much. And it has been, it has been a blast to, to watch you as you go through your journey. And, and it has really been amazing as you've helped me go through mine. So, Aww, thanks, um, Izzy. Yeah. A special thanks to Alice Carruth from N2K and T Minus for sharing her journey to space. Be sure to check out her links listed in today's show notes. Please like and subscribe to the Space Marketing Podcast to help get the word out about this incredible industry of space. I hope 
that you have found this podcast useful for your journey as you reach for the stars. <laughs>